viewers and listeners meet hook jim here the wrestle horror podcast i couldn't do this show without my co-host donnie hoover donnie next week's thanksgiving i know you've already uh you've already uh, unbuckled the belt and you're ready to get some turkey and mashed potatoes oh yeah i'm ready to get down with it so we got it in the freezer gonna be pulling it out here in a couple of days let it thaw out i'm ready to go and on this thanksgiving recording <laughs> of the wrestle horror podcast we've got a young man that has been wrestling for about 10 years now uh i've been fortunate enough to meet him and and watch him a couple of times at at future great wrestling in hamilton ohio i am of course of course talking about the savage kyle hawk kyle how are you my friend what is up guys how are you today you know, you know i'm i couldn't be happier i'm on vacation for the next 10 days so i hear you man i hear you uh <laughs> First and foremost, I want to thank you guys for bringing me on. Uh, I know it's out of like pity or um, what's the word out of uh, <clears throat> uh, ah, pity is a better word, but you know, you guys need that Native American on this Thanksgiving podcast. You know, <laughs> you got to make it authentic. I get you guys. I never <laughs> put that together. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool, man. I appreciate it. You know, thank you for, thank you for your time and thank you, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it is what I'm saying. <laughs> take what you can get. Huh? Yeah, I yeah. will say no pity involved, but you know, the first thing I want to say is thank you for your service being an army veteran. Mm -hmm. Yep. For sure. Thank you guys for thanking me. Uh, I appreciate it. Believe it or not. I used to have, I used to get really bugged when people would thank me. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's just an army thing, but now it's like, well, thank you guys for thanking me. I appreciate it. So, so how long did you serve in the army i was four years 2011 mm -hmm. to 2015 and what did you do uh i was an 11 bravo which is infantry <clears throat> i was stationed in fort hood for three years and then spent a year in afghanistan okay so you've been abroad and you, you've seen what's going on over there so yeah again. i am i am combat effective or combat uh mission capable whatever you want to call it. I've, I've seen it. Well, again, thank you for your service, Kyle, but let's talk about some wrestling. Um, Ooh, my favorite subject. Let's do it. <laughs> what got you, I mean, what really intrigued you? What got you involved in pro wrestling? Oh, uh, you know, um, growing up on the reservation, I am legit native American. Uh, I did grow up in our ways and, uh, learned our cultures and language and stuff like that um growing up on the res it was kind of very 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 poor but you found stuff to entertain yourself like go outside and play and you know uh <clears throat> whenever like my family would have money maybe we can get like a gaming system i remember having a sega uh playing sonic the hedgehog so that was pretty cool but i always like to go outside and play go hunt and uh, we had a tv but it was like one of those old school box TVs that were like maybe three feet deep in the in the TV. I don't know if you guys ever had mm -hmm. that, but it had like yeah. a knob where you turn it. Yeah. And uh, I remember flipping through it one day with my uncle, and we watched. We we saw wrestling, and I was like, "Man, this is awesome! I really want to watch this." So my uncle and I watch it, and then every you know every week we always catch it, and you know it just I got invested in it. I think the very first episode I've ever watched. On, uh, was uh, WWE Raw's War or WWF at the time? It was when Stone Cold stunned Santa. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> so, and then um, as time progressed, I like I remember I remember from right then and there, I always wanted to be a wrestler. I just wanted to live that, uh, go down that path, and uh, nothing was going to stop me. And uh, I'd always rush around with the Slam Buddies or my action figures and stuff. Typical, you know, uh, American dream uh, origin story or whatever. Um, but it was uh, it was just that episode that caught my eye and it made me want to become who I am today. So, speaking of those box TVs, we had one uh, back in the day, and I'm I'm what is known as the very first version of the remote control because i was the youngest in my family so i was the one that had to get up and change the channel and turn the volume up and down <laughs> i mean yeah you'd be lazy but you'd be in shape at the same time because you got to get up you know you right 
Yeah, that's my dad. That's what my dad's like. Donnie, go change that. Go turn on this. Go turn it up. Turn it down. I was like, good lord, man. So See, um, I was. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much how it how it started. So and then later on, like we, I found out that WWE Tonka was part of my tribe and my culture. Nice. And then I met him at I had met him in New Mexico for a show. It was like Lucha Libre USA. And then we just talked, and you know he gave me his advice and uh, helped me out with whatever questions I had and what I needed to do. And like the first and foremost thing was like, I got to graduate school, um, get an education and stuff like that. So that's what I did. And then uh, pretty much the rest is history. So. So, um, yeah, I've, I watched Tatanka many times and I was always impressed by him and uh, I enjoyed watching him perform, but um did you find a wrestling school? Is there somebody that trained you? I mean, I mean, how did your, your education go as far as wrestling is? Uh, I found the school in New Mexico. Uh, they're no longer doing anything now. Uh, they were called destiny wrestling organization. And uh, I got trained with them. And then right when I uh, kind of started like traveling and stuff, I found uh, David cash or AKA kid cash from ECW. And then he kind of trained me as well because I was stationed in Georgia and uh, for, for uh, basic training and stuff like that. Uh, side note, a lot of people don't know this, but I was wrestling before I joined the military and then oh. I was doing both at the same time. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, but um, I was uh, under the tutelage of David Cash or Kid Cash and uh, Tatanka, of course, gave me his input, but mainly like I've had people here and there like Chavo Guerrero, MVP, uh, Kenny King, Sin Bodhi. Like I've had like a bunch of people just help me, you know, try to figure out what I need to do and find my path and stuff like that. So uh, I just, I just sat under the learning trees of other people who have made it and just listened honestly. So. Okay. All right. I can, I can understand the, uh, the working wrestling and being in the military. I have a cousin who was uh, in the Navy and wrestling uh, around the Florida and Georgia area uh, back in the day as well. Nice. So, yeah, I understand that. Uh, and of course, you know, your, your military training really kind of helps with your, uh, your, your pro wrestling training because of the fitness and everything. Definitely. That's one of the things I'm lacking on right now. I think uh, for like during quarantine and COVID and stuff like that, I was very, very, dedicated to it but then traveling started traveling again i just haven't had the uh time to <clears throat> learn how to do it on the road but i will but that's one of my things i think that that holds me back is my uh my body i mean you gotta it just I, i'm not making excuses like i own up to whatever i've done but that, i think that was the last that's the only thing that's holding me back is the way i look but again natives are not huge unlike your unless you're tatanka but you know, we're very well fit, very well lean and stuff like that. But, you know, it, it, it sucks, but shit happens, you know. Now, when you was in the military, did you ever uh, find other wrestlers or people that liked wrestling and you guys get in there and mix it up a little bit in your downtime? <clears throat> um, I, I didn't find any workers, but, like, there was friends that, like, watched it with me whenever we're – not going on missions and stuff we'd watch it and you know just laugh and have a good time but basically uh we didn't really have that much entertainment until we got to like a bigger base we were always in small areas mm -hmm. uh, but until we got to like gosney which was a uh, polish base like it had everything so we could watch and stuff but i think there was like a three-month period we were staying there so it was oh, pretty nice. You know, I, I've got to say that, and the times I've seen you at FGW, and especially recently, it was Hawk versus Hawk. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was that was a great match between the two of you. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, you know, Cody Hawk versus Kyle Hawk. You know, it could have gone either way, honestly. Yeah, definitely. I think. Uh, I, I don't, shout out to Cody Hawk and Future Great Wrestling, by the way. Um, 
for him to give me a chance and like let me show what I can do like I will always be grateful for him and uh, my loyalty will always be towards him and stuff uh, but yeah I wanted to just see what would happen and um, told him hey I think we can draw like Hawk versus Hawk I mean I'm confident enough and I, I know damn well he's confident enough and you know I just wanted that chance and so he's like yeah let's do it and I was like all right and then we made the promo and you know, you guys got invested in it because I felt like it was something that hasn't been done yet. And it was never like, it was something new <clears throat> and, and like no disrespect to like the other talent and stuff like that. None, none of it whatsoever. It's just, uh, I like, I'm the type to throw in something that's like, Oh, like a, like a monkey wrench or something, you know? And I want one of the fans to be like, man, like uh, the reaction Hawk versus Hawk, it can go either way. That's the reaction that I wanted. I wanted to see, who was who who was loyal to Cody who was loyal to me and you know the the story we told in that ring was very very special and man like I think that was a from re, from start to finish I think it was like a 30 minute match and we just kept going and going and going and like we just you know never gave up we were actually two competitors in a ring trying to win and show like actual pure wrestling without giving a strike or hit or you know doing these big huge moves and you know it it was just a good story to tell and i love that i love that match. that was a fun match yeah and i've got to say that every time you did that that war cry that whoop whoop um the crowd popped every single time for that yeah it's mm -hmm. it's my uh it's my Ric Flair thing, you know, you got the chops, you got the woo, you know, it's my, it's my own thing. So it's pretty cool. And it does, it, it goes over well. I mean, it, it grabs the audience's attention and, and they do pop. They react in some way, shape or form, you know, it's uh, you've got your niche and you know, Ric Flair has got his niche and you know, it, it, it works. Definitely. And I think like, <clears throat> like uh i think that's what's also missing too in professional wrestling these days like uh from what i've seen and what i've gathered everybody's kind of the same everybody's like doing the same stuff or the same you know move set or concept or whatever nobody different nobody really stands out anymore and it's and it sucks and i feel like also wrestling's uh missing uh real i think everything's kind of like rehearse or um what's the word just n not tr with true intentions and with me like that's all you're gonna get is real like you're gonna like i don't know if you've seen me as a heel yet but um like it's way different than what i am as as a face over there at fgw because it's real it's how i feel and what i portray myself and uh I think if there's any wrestlers or anybody listening to this podcast, I feel like that's what you guys need to like take from it is, you know, real, just be yourself, just times it by 10. You can't like the crowd's always going to realize when you're lying or when you're fake, that's just life. Everybody finds out that you're fake or you're a liar, but if you're real, they respect you for that. And then they gravitate towards that because that's something they can latch on. Do you prefer heel or do you prefer face? Man, it just depends on where I'm at. Um, I'm comfortable with both. I really am. I love playing the hero or I love being the villain. Like, um, It also just depends on my mood and how I feel. Uh, if I'm having a shitty day, then I'm going to definitely enjoy being a heel. If I'm having a great day or a great week, then I'll definitely be you know, a great baby. But it just depends on where I'm at. Uh, crowd wise and how they respond and stuff like that but um i feel like heel set me off uh set me apart differently from everyone because the way i can piss you guys off is way different than anybody else can in my opinion i just and i learned the language of wrestling and now i know how to like speak or listen to it and stuff like that so it's pretty cool mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, so uh, let, let's let's kind of uh, take a right turn here. Let's talk 
uh, you know, we were talking before we went on the air and you said you like horror movies and, you know, this is wrestle horror. So what are some of your favorite horror movies? Oh, uh, wait, let's go. I'm, I'm a really huge fan. Um, believe it or not of the Chucky stuff. Okay. I don't, I don't know why I just enjoy it. I think a doll killing people is funny as shit to me. Um, uh, <laughs> I watched Halloween Kills. I watched all the Halloween movies. They're pretty good. I, I enjoyed them. Uh, the one movie that scared the shit out of me, and you guys are probably going to laugh, uh, was The Blair Witch Project. Okay, I can I see that. Yeah, I can see that for sure. That scared the shit out of me when I was so young because I literally thought the witch was going to come. And, you know, it's just real realism, I guess. Real. Mm -hmm. Realism. So right. that always, yeah. that always scared well, me. Well, found but, footage wasn't even really a thing back then either. So people, everybody believed it was real. <laughs> yeah. It just, oh man, it scared me. I couldn't sleep for like a week in my own bed. <laughs> um, when it came out. I want to say maybe 10, 11. Okay. Yeah. I had to sneak it though. I, I, I didn't tell my parents that I watched it, so. <laughs> but they, but they knew cause I was so scared. So, right. have you been catching a new chucky tv series i haven't yet i don't have uh i have like netflix and hulu and stuff but i don't have the sci-fi channel so oh, okay yeah they're actually doing pretty good with it is it really good yeah i enjoy it nice um i did watch this movie recently i told you guys about it called antlers right um it just came out it's really good i like the story with it pretty much about the wendigo uh if you guys don't know what the Wendigo is, it's pretty much a uh, demonic Native American uh, like spirit creature, whatever you want to uh, call it. But in in our in our culture, it's pretty much um, a cursed spirit that was uh, made by a human eating human flesh, a cannibalism, and so now they were uh, cursed by a bruja or witch. To roam the earth and consume like human flesh it's just a big creature it's pretty cool uh the way they i think guillermo del toro is the one that directed it uh the way he does his films too are is very uh artistic and very cool because the creatures are so unique and so like the it's it's just I, I love his work but the way he did antlers was really good it was a really good story to it too and it has those like moments where you're just like oh man what's gonna oh shit you know makes you jump i love <laughs> right. movies that make you jump so mm -hmm. i haven't seen it yet but it's definitely on my watch list and i am familiar with the wendigo i actually um on a side note before we continue on the horror movie thing uh donnie and i both work in the haunted attraction industry and i have designed an entire haunted attraction based on the wendigo nice i have to check that out it's still in paper it hasn't been made real yet but donnie and i are working on that well if you need mm. some help if you need some native american guidance I'm your man. there you go you you will be my go-to guy for that for sure i <laughs> appreciate uh, it so um you were talking about chucky and i gotta tell you this this is funny and donnie knows where i'm going with this <laughs> uh, donnie's got a granddaughter how old is how old is she um, now she's eight now she's eight now mm -hmm. The past couple of years, he's got a Chucky Good Guys doll in the box. Oh, shit. And mm -hmm. the past couple of years, he's wrapped it up and put it out for her for Christmas or her birthday. That's mm -hmm. a good prank. That's a good one. That's a good rip. <laughs> and she looks at the package and goes, uh-uh, I'm not opening it. <laughs> yeah, she caught, she, she caught me on the birthday one because, I mean, I made it obvious. I had tape around the neck and everything, but the yeah. Christmas one, she had no clue. And, and I had it in a smaller box, like a regular cardboard box. So when she opened up the lid, the legs and the head like popped up and she yeah. like damn near shit her pants. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like... <laughs> now you got to figure out how to like do it different times. Right. Like if you're cleaning and she opens the door, Oh God, he's right there. Yeah. Instead of elf on the shelf, I'm going to do Chucky on the shelf or something. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> do Chucky for the holidays. Do that. <laughs> And uh, Donnie himself, he's a huge Friday the 13th fan, if you can't see behind him. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can see Jason Ford. He's the mask. Congratulations. Yeah. Mm, he also got yeah. it back there, too, which is pretty cool. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. My wife bought me that. He, he's animatronic. He's six foot tall and talks to us and his eyes light up. And he's creepy. just holding that spot until I can get me a six foot Jason animatronic. And then he goes, he, go. he leaves the facility. <laughs> And uh, Donnie actually got to go out to Camp Crystal Lake. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yep, out in New Jersey. Me and the wife went this past uh, summer. They had, a, they had a special weekend where the first Jason, the young boy that comes up out of the water and yeah. grabs Adrian King, both him, first Jason and Adrian King was both there that weekend. Oh. We were there, and I said that was the first time since they filmed that they were both at Camp Crystal Lake at the same time again. So it was like a very cool weekend, memorable yeah. one for me. <laughs> That's about ass. Congratulations, man. Yeah, thank you. So um, we, we've touched a little bit on horror. Do, do you um, do you like some obscure horror movies, or is, if there's some niche stuff you like out there, or uh, like the, be more descriptive, please. Okay, um, maybe not as popular, but still spooky like not a mainstream horror film like something yeah. odd uh what was the one ah, um he's like an axe murderer but he's like this big old buff dude i forgot hatchet, hatchet. hatchet. i like hatchet hatchet was pretty good mm -hmm. um, Kane hotter yeah <laughs> only because that uh danielle i forgot Harris. her last name danielle harris. harris yeah she's always she's like my horror movie crush is the best way i can describe it she's very very awesome very beautiful uh hopefully she's listening to this podcast <laughs> and I, I can understand that because she is quite the hottie definitely and well, thank you for making those movies Appreciate <laughs> it. um you know and we were talking earlier now we're going to kind of shift a little bit further uh you you talked about halloween attractions and you said there's some great attractions out in vegas i mean yeah, you live in what the entertainment capital of the world. There's always got to be something going on out there. Yeah, um, here in Vegas they do like haunted houses, and there's one place in particular. I think it's in Summerlin, where they have three haunted houses, and you pay like so much for each one. But if you pay like a whole total, I think it's like 100, 150 or whatever. But you can go in all three houses, and all three houses are different themes. I think the year that I went, uh, it was like a vampire theme one and then a coven a witch coven themed one and then a prison themed one well like they were all all good like all of them were very very good but the prison one you literally have to sign a waiver because they have permission to touch you and you know it, like strobe lights can like pretty much mess like mess you up and stuff and mm -hmm. um, just i know that gave me ptsd because uh one of the one of the the uh exhibits in that haunted house was you're getting taken over by like Taliban terrorists. He's got a gun to your head, even though it's like makeshift play. And then they put you in a, a prison cell and then uh, they have like people lined up and they have guns at you while you're, you know, standing in a prison cell. And then they take your picture and then the floor drops and then you got like a loud bang. But that was like, kind of like army PTSD. I was like, Oh no. But, <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask, did that affect you any or. No, it, it just, it, it, it was like one of those things where it's like, Hey, you need to get out of here. My sister at the time was like, yeah, we should probably get out of here. I'm sorry. And I'm like, yeah, it's all good. But um, <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Uh, I know they have like other big uh, haunted houses here too. I just haven't been to them. Those are just the only ones that I did. Uh, unfortunately, the last Halloween I we didn't really do anything. I think we just stayed indoors, or we did. We went to go to dinner or something. Like that. So we didn't really check anything out. So I'm going to steer the questions back to wrestling now, since we've covered some of that. Okay. Uh, and you know, I've I've been watching you on Facebook, and you know, you've been working for a lot of different promotions. Um, OVW is being one of them, and you know that's. That's just a step down from the big time, man. I mean, how did you get that gig? Uh, my good friend, uh, Jesse Bell Smothers, introduced me to them. And then uh, Amazing Maria uh, kept helping me out. 
too. Um, I would always let them know, like when I'm in town, and I would go and they they would uh, talk to Al Snow. Shout out to OVW and Al Snow, um, and they would help me. And I would, whenever I'd spend a week there or whatever, I'd go train with them and and go learn uh, from uh, Doug Basham and Al Snow and all them. So it was a pretty cool opportunity, and uh, thankfully and graciously, they gave me uh, some time to go show what I can do to them, and uh, they they enjoyed it. So, no, I I see you flying all over the country. I mean, have you done any international gigs? I haven't yet. I've been to Mexico, but that was like way long time ago. But recently, I haven't. I want to change that. So if anybody from the UK, a promoter or, you know, anywhere that's internationally, I'm available, just so you know. Uh, I know Tatanka goes to Europe a lot and he wants, I, I want to go with him. I think that would be fun, sure. especially us as a tag team. I think we'd be, we'd have a ball. So I think that'd be a great tag team. Yeah, definitely. So what are some of the other promotions you've wrestled for um, other than the ones I've mentioned already? Uh, I've done stuff with Impact Wrestling, I think back in 2016, 2015. Impact is one of my favorite promotions. Well, I got to, I think within a two week span, I got to wrestle Rich Swan. Okay. And then Sammy Callahan and Moose. And this okay. was like right, right when they were about to become champions. So it was pretty cool. Nice. And then uh, I got to wrestle this year alone. I got to wrestle like James Storm, which yeah. was a big, huge bucket list. Um, and uh, Ace Austin, former X Division Impact Champion. So mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. Um, and I hope to to wrestle quite a few more names. Uh, I, ha I have some. I just can't think of them right now. But definitely done that. Um Pour some always at FGW whenever I, I get into town. Right. They love having me there. Uh, yeah. uh, 127 Pro Wrestling in Tennessee. I go there every Thursday uh, whenever I'm in town. They use me as well. Uh, Total Championship Wrestling in Kentucky. Uh, other promotions. I'm, I'm sorry if I don't mention you guys. I apologize. But it's just so many right now that I don't really it's hard to keep track iwa mid-south okay. uh i've done stuff with them in indiana ian rotten shout out to you appreciate it um yeah just anywhere i can i can go you know so um do you still have a shoot job or is it just pro wrestling for you I, uh pro wrestling has been my job so okay. i think for like the past three years it's just been pro wrestling okay. and i've been grateful uh, that you know, I got good a good fan connection, good people to help me pay my rent, pay my bills, and stuff, and let me do what I like to do. So, thank you guys, appreciate it. Well, I know you had a little bit of problem not too long ago. You got robbed. Unfortunately, yeah, I was uh, taking a friend. Uh, if you guys don't know Tolly Blanchard, uh, he was in town because uh, Tessa Blanchard was in town and. We're really good friends, and she asked me to pick up her dad, so I picked up her dad, picked up Tolly, dropped him off at the Circa Hotel, and then uh, as soon as I was leaving, I was trying to get on the interstates to go back home, but unfortunately, there was, like, construction being done, and so uh, I had to make a, -turn, a different turn, and I ended up in a not a good neighborhood is the best way I can describe it. And a gentleman was across the street, didn't even realize it. Next thing you know, tapped on the window and he had a gun to my head on the window, told me to get out. Uh, it sucks because like, I think I did like a two week tour prior before that. And I literally made like a bunch of money on my merch. And it's like the most money I've ever made on merchandise. I was so proud of it. I just left it in my fanny pack because the bank was closed. So uh, I couldn't deposit it till the next day. And then, um, he took my backpack, which had my wallet, keys, uh, phone, uh, that money, and credit card, social security card, ID. He took everything. Uh, he didn't take the vehicle, which was nice. I I was grateful for that. But everything else, it just uh, – he took my identity, took my uh, hard work, 
and uh unfortunately that was just bad luck and it was shitty and uh uh yeah so ever since then i've been trying to like get everything back which i have i've gotten you know new card a new id i just need a new passport new social security card and i'm good but it was hard because uh all that money i made you know that was supposed to go towards bills and towards you know uh helping my roommate uh because she just recently got surgery so like at the time she wasn't going to be uh able to work and stuff like that so it was just uh another person depending on me to you know take care and provide and that's what i was trying to do but that bad luck kind of pushed stuff back and but uh thankfully some people helped me out um a lot of the wrestlers up there, especially like Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee, they helped me, you know, uh, got me, uh, like, did, uh, what was it, a uh, GoFundMe? A, like, yeah, like a Go, not, a, it wasn't a GoFundMe, but they did like a fundraiser where they sold like merch and stuff and raised me some money. And I appreciate okay. that, guys, you know, to help me out, bills and stuff. But. Did they ever find a person that did it? No, we never did. Uh, the way it goes i guess yeah you'd probably like to run into him without that gun though huh <laughs> uh, honestly you know like being trained military like i'm sure a lot of the guys are like oh psh, i i would have you know disarmed him and hardly blah 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 i would have killed him me it's like nah like we were trained that if they're nervous you know you let them it's not worth your life you know like there's mm -hmm. other stuff more important you know and you know if they're nervous, they have a chance of actually pulling that trigger on accident. So, yeah. uh, as far as I know, I, I was told I did the right thing at the time. I didn't think it was like, cause I was like one of those army guys, but now thinking about it, it's like, all right, yeah, like it is what it is. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be macho for a minute and get my, get my shit in. Cause in all honestly, like, I'm not really like that. Mm. But, you know, if I, if I did meet him or I bumped into him, you know, I would ask for some stuff back, of course, and then, you know, right. leave it at that. So, but I don't want to run into them because I don't want to deal with that. That's in the past. It's behind mm -hmm. me to go. So, oh, yeah. Well, we are certainly happy that you're okay. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, everything else can be replaced, but you can't be. Definitely. Definitely. So, I, I'm, we're happy for that. And, uh, Hopefully the, the people out there are buy some, some more merch. And as a speaking of merch, you told me right on uh, Facebook messengers, you got some new merch out, man. I do. Uh, which is pretty cool. Thank you for letting me get this plug in. Sure. Uh, so we're going to go from Kyle to Hawk right now. Uh, for <clears throat> here's, here's baby face Hawk uh, <laughs> for everyone out there who's native American, please support please be a part of something that I'm trying to grow because we are nothing, you know, we're, we're, we are something, but we're not being represented to the full potential. I think too many of us are in hiding. I think we need to get out of the shadows. I think native Americans need to come out and rise up again, you know? So uh, if you guys see me at a show or, you know, you see me online, whatever, buy that cool Kyle Hawk Savage merch. You know, we got the NWA shirt. We got the Savage shirt. We got, uh, was the other one the Skoden shirt which is a limited time only uh they're selling pretty good uh, i'm only gonna make one batch of run on them and then uh recently we just got cool uh savage hats uh white and black uh snapbacks and flex fit and then we also got uh a brand new design which i showed you today i think um since with it being native american uh history month and veterans day uh kind of all tied in the same thing i wanted to make something special so a lot of people always complained about my shirts being black and never having any colored shirts so i took your advice i listened um this next shirt which i've shown you guys um it is called home of the brave it's the american flag with my uh skull and headdress logo on it with arrowheads on the front and on the back, it says Home of the Brave. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, Native Americans were the first ones here. And I think we'll be the last ones here. But 
um, being a vet, I wanted to do something special with that. So if you guys buy a uh, a um, Home of the Brave shirt or hat, the hats are gray as well. They have the cool flag on the front. Um, if you guys buy those uh, do, uh, proceeds from the purchase, uh, I think like 10 bucks or whatever from each purchase, I'm going to send to the Wounded, Wear, uh, Wounded Warrior uh, Fund because uh, I was injured in battle. I took a grenade and the Wounded Warrior Project helped me get better. So I would like to pay it forward using these t-shirts and help with other soldiers and other people who are like me who have been injured in war. So buy the shirts. They are a limited time, only two. Uh, I know you are going to get one. You're probably going to get a hat, but who knows, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Do you, brother? I think you would look good with both of them. I'm just saying. And I also think <laughs> Donnie would be good with them, too. He will look very well in a nice snapback for a uh, Home of the Brave Kyle Hawk uh, shirt. And, um, yeah, help support the – help support Native Americans, help support the troops. So, But as Heel Hawk, as a bad guy, look, you colonizers, the least you guys can do is buy a shirt <laughs> from all the land that you took from us at least pay it for it for all the what your ancestors have done in the past. Now, I know the whole explanation of, well, that wasn't me. That's not my, my didn't do anything wrong. You're guilty by association. It was your ancestors. Sorry, I don't have pity for you. Buy a shirt, buy a hat, buy a picture. You owe me, period. <laughs> See, I'm always a heel fan, so that actually makes me want to buy one. <laughs> I actually have an NWA shirt that I bought from you. I know. I appreciate that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, where can people buy your merch? I mean, what's, what's the website? Uh, right now I'm selling them. Like, like you guys can message me. Uh, my Instagram is bird of prey 99. My Facebook's Kyle Hawk. Um, usually at the show, if you guys catch me, I have a big merchandise bag. Everything's in there. Um, I do have a press pro wrestling tea store. Uh, I don't really use it that much uh, because uh, a lot of the shirts are kind of old school from back in the day. But if you guys want to check it out, please check it out for us in peace. Kyle Hawk, uh, Savage, I think it's under. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you guys order something, I, that they definitely go out. Uh, I know I sent some, I think, a couple of days ago for people who have bought them. So definitely get your guys' shirts now. Don't wait because they're a limited time only. Limited time. Limited time. <laughs> limited time. And it's for a great cause. You know, quite frankly, uh, you mentioned the Wounded Warrior Project for some of that. And uh, New Ohio Wrestling has also been involved with the Wounded Warrior Project. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yep. The Ohio State Fair last year we did. Yep. That's yeah. pretty pretty noble and honorable of you. I think you appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. That's uh, we, why you should probably, you know, book me. You know, being Native you American and, and a vet, I'm just saying. Wounded warrior representative. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over to Donnie now, Kyle. Let's go. All right. Yeah. The time for the question. Uh, all right. Like the one question. Okay. Rule them all. The one question. Yep. We'll do it on every episode. It's a uh, no right or wrong answer. It's just for fun. We just like to get inside the minds of our guests and see how twisted they really are and compared to how twisted we are. So that question is you are the main serial killer in your own horror film. What is your go-to kill? Like weapon wise or. Yeah. In any way, what would be your signature kill? What's your finisher? How would you kill somebody? Ooh, well, definitely got to scalp them because you got to leave that signature. You know, everybody's all about how they look these days and about how, you know, what what's important because they want everyone's validation. Me, I don't I, like, you know, whatever. Um, I definitely scalp them because then I want the, I want like the police to know that it was me and not just, you know, <laughs> right. different, 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 whatever. I want, I, if I was a serial killer, I would want to be known. That'd be your because calling I, card, huh? Yeah, I would want to be like, uh, I would just want to be known because then, like, again, like, I feel like that's all it, it should be about. 
like how how you if you're tormented people should know about it you know um i don't know man uh i would just do a series of different different things there's not like any specific way uh I think the calling, I think my calling card would just be the more, the more important thing, I guess. So mm-hmm. and without a scalp would just, would be pretty vicious and pretty unique in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. I like the scalping idea. I do. I think either a tomahawk or I'd just probably be old school. I would just probably do a knife or a tomahawk maybe an arrow i don't know uh i would just be i would be more <laughs> i guess noble is the best way i could describe it i don't know like <laughs> i don't want to shoot anyone i think that's the easy way mm, scalp would, them with a gimmick what the hell <laughs> yeah just, just tomahawk like come in from behind tomahawk them and then scalp them and then let them die and call it a day <laughs> there you go even though i'm not gonna do that I'm really not going to do that. Just so you guys know, <laughs> this is a question. Right. A hypothetical? Commonly, yeah. That is commonly asked. Well, see, so yeah, you wouldn't do that because the more people you scalp, the less people buy your shirt. It is true. That is true. I wouldn't scalp people. No. <laughs> Donnie, do you have any other questions for Kyle? You um, no. Yeah, I said, well, I guess we could uh, go into the paranormal side. Are you into paranormal, any? We haven't really uh, touched on that. I am. I'm a very, uh, I, I'm not a fan of it, but I respect it. Because, uh, you know, being a Native American, you see some stuff, you understand the spirits and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I believe in paranormal activity and stuff. I just choose to stay away from it because I don't want to be those people who, disrespect it or have to keep um antagonizing i think that's the word but they antagonize it just to get proof like mm-hmm. i think that's when bad shit happens that's but, Zach Bagans yeah adventures um i will say i will tell you this kyle i've been a paranormal investigator for about 20 years now mm-hmm. uh the last thing i want to do is antagonize the spirits um, I try to communicate with them in a positive way. Definitely. Uh, but I will never antagonize them just to get a reaction. Well, I didn't. I don't mean people like that. I just mean uh, stupid people who get like the Ouija boards or like do exactly. it for the wrong reasons, if that makes sense. Thank mm. you. Yes. Like, paranormal investigators, like I get it. You want to communicate with them. I, I totally understand it. Like I, I support that one bit. But what I don't support is the morons who are just like, let's go speak to the dead. Maybe we'll get magic powers or we'll do this, do that. It's like, don't provoke them, man. Like, just let them rest. Let them do your things. Mm -hmm. Again, but there's like people like on the Travel Channel, the Ghost Adventures, paranormal uh, investigators such as yourself. You know, I definitely support you guys because you guys, there are some spirits out there that are lost and that want to communicate, find that resting peace. And, you know, I, I would definitely, if, if next time I'm in town in Ohio and I have nothing to do, I definitely would like to go on a ghost adventure paranormal thing with you. Okay. Definitely. That's like one of the goals that I want to do in life, but um, I do support you. I do. I, I, let's, let's, I don't want to misconstrue that. So. The rumor is the FGW arena is haunted. Is it really? Yeah. By what? Uh, I've heard Cody and both both Cody and Shauna tell me about and and Amos tell me about weird noises in the middle of the night when nobody's around. And figures, Cody and Cody and uh, Shauna told us that night about the figure behind the baseball pitching machine. Right, man. I feel like we should explore it and see what that spirit wants if they, if it's there. Just... Uh, I, I'm gonna. Cody won't do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He said he's staying home when we do it. But I Sean believe. will. I, I'm down if we can get an episode where it's me and Shauna with you guys doing a ghost, ghost like encounter episode of figuring out if FGW's haunted. 
I feel like that's a podcast or that is a YouTube series that needs to happen. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun. I will have to talk to them and see what we can work out. Let's mm-hmm. do it. I definitely would like to be a part of that. Yeah, cool. We got all these people want to be a part of our paranormal investigations, Donnie. Yeah, see, we can build our own team at this point. No. As long as you got a Ghostbusters hotel pack, I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> I actually have a friend that has those. <laughs> we do. <laughs> so, I, I, those who don't know me, I like to watch uh, people play YouTube, uh, or I like to watch on YouTube people play video games and stuff. And there's this one, I don't know if you guys know, it's called um, uh, Plasmorphia or something like that. What, what it is, is pretty much you play as these characters, but you're like, you're uh, ghost, uh, uh, what's what's the word? What are you again? Paranormal investigator. You're a paranormal, you're playing as a paranormal investigator, but you're going into like random places, like a house, a school, stuff like that. And you have to find the ghost and like, they have like the, the things where you can talk to the spirit, the spirit box. And you have like a cross and you have like a bible but you have to figure out what kind of a ghost is it is it an omni is it a banshee is it a like demonic spirit you have to figure it out i always like watching those uh only because like it makes it makes you think it makes you wonder but it's it's cool to see people play that and then uh if you don't like you're you could tell that the ghost is there if like the the uh temperature gauge goes down because it gets cold or you'll your heart starts beating and then if the ghost gets you 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 pretty much just die and then you have to like be a floating spirit while the other paranormal investigators like go through the house and figure it out but you can see where the ghost is at but you can't tell them where it's at like it's pretty cool man well that's neat Uh, Mm -hmm. i do have a spirit box by the way oh do you really yes nice amongst other equipment i got plenty of it (laughs) I, i believe it Man, we really, I really want to try it. I really want to do, do one. I think that would be fun. I, I will talk to uh, Brian and Cody and Shauna and see what can work out. Let's do it. And then we'll just record, record the whole thing and then play it on YouTube or the podcast, whatever. I oh, like. I got plenty of cameras to record with, so that's Let's no problem. It. Man, if we can get some cameras, we're like, it's just our face and our reactions. Like, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I got a couple of those cameras we could probably use too. Ooh, do it. All right. I got some questions for you guys. I bet okay. nobody's asked you these questions. So let's do it. Okay. As a fan in FGW, mm-hmm. who do you want to see me take on next? That's a good question. Uh, I've seen you take on quite a few people, but there's a newcomer. It's been around recently, and his name is uh, Kill Billy Nate Hewitt. I would like to see you take on him. What's funny is that him and I used to feud in San Antonio. Oh, uh, back in 2014, 15, maybe earlier. Yeah, we used to, he was he used to be uh, uh, rock star Nate Cross or whatever. And I thought it was the funniest thing. And uh, he used to look like, uh, what was his name? He used to look like uh, the lead singer of Poison, Brett Michaels. Okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. Like, we would just always have fun. But, uh, yeah, him and I have been friends for a good long time. And we always had good chemistry, always had fun in the ring. And I definitely, he's definitely on one of the lists to work over there at FW because uh, his new gimmick or his new uh persona the kill billy thing i think it's great i think it's unique um and the other stuff that he has coming out it's gonna be pretty cool too but i definitely want to wrestle him as like as as that now like it's it's a story that's there because you know there's a young hawk and a young nate now it's like okay we're in present time let's see what happens you know well and that would give you an opportunity to be the heel because right now he's a face Oh, I definitely would be. Uh, and it's funny, too, because he was a heel and I was the face. Okay. In the past. So it would be cool to switch it up, see yeah. see what we can do. I'd like to mm-hmm. see that. 
Uh, let's go. Have you seen my work, Don? Uh, I have not. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, what do you look for in your promotion, and what do you want from a? Um, uh, well, just uniqueness. But I say we're we're uh, basically a family friendly type promotion, but we still like it to be you know violent and as real as possible in a safe way. So um, yeah, just as long as it's a clean a clean gimmick. I mean, I love good heel work um, and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, just yeah, safety. Yeah, you know, and like I said, to be honest, the work in the ring is not near as important to me as the work in the locker room. You know how you portray yourself and how you are in the locker room and outside of the ring. So, um, but yeah, like you know, like I said, as long as it's clean, like we, you know, people come out cussing and showing their ass and all that stuff, we kind of shy away from those type of people. <laughs> so, but yeah, you know, as long as you're safe and and uh, safe and you know, do do what we ask, you know, that's pretty much the qualifications cool all right cool cool and that would i would be thrilled to be able to announce you coming into the ring man i'd i'd be a great honor and a privilege so hey donnie make it happen if you can yeah. <laughs> we may have some stuff coming up here soon i'll be announcing so we'll have to see <laughs> one, one thing that i would like to do too at fgw or your promotion um i haven't done this and I feel like I would like to work uh, one of the female talents. I'm a uh, I'm a fan of intergender, and I like to see the concept of what we can do or what kind of story we can tell. Because I know there's there's Harley, uh, Ari, and Shauna, right? Yeah. Um, occasionally, Skylar Orion. Yeah, her too. Uh, I just think it'd be cool to work one of them. Uh, just to see how it is and, you know, uh, see if they're tough, which I think they are, see how tough they are actually with a uh, Savage. So, I think you and Harley would have a good match. Man, it'd be brutal. I know that. Yep. Yep, definitely. Correction, <laughs> I don't want to do it no more. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> what about Shauna? Uh, I accidentally – Man, I forgot about this. Someone reminded me the other day. Uh, I actually Tomahawk shot on the face on accident uh, after that Hawk versus Hawk match. I don't know if you remember it. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, so I feel like she hasn't really been talking to me, so she might be still mad. I don't know. <laughs> There's also a lot of drama over there, too, so I don't, I don't, uh, like, her and Amos and Cody, it's just, like, their thing. So right. I'm just, like, I'm just a leaf in the wind, man. <laughs> any other questions for us kyle uh no i'm good that, that's it that's all i have donnie what about you? you got any questions for kyle no i think we covered everything so that's been uh very insightful and like i said i wasn't a hundred percent familiar with you but you know i feel like i am now and i'll definitely have to look at some of your work and stuff Appreciate it. I like uh, Amatoros. I like long walks on the beach. Uh, <laughs> I like dinners. I like puppies. And my favorite color is brown. And yeah, that's. And on your, favorite. and on your scalping thing, you're only going to go about ten inches. I'm, a, I'm assuming. <laughs> uh, nah, you gotta go. You gotta show that skull or a piece of the brain, man. Otherwise, you did it wrong. <laughs> So uh, let's give you one more opportunity to plug all your social media where people can get your merch, that kind of thing, Kyle. I appreciate it. Uh, you guys can follow me on my Facebook, which is Kyle Hawk. My Instagram is birdaprey 99 I have 5,000 friends on Facebook, but I only have like 1,500 friends on Instagram. I need those numbers up. If you guys are listening, you guys are fans of me, please follow me, birdaprey 99 on my insta i need more followers please help a native out the least you guys can do uh, my twitter is svge99 uh, i do have a pro wrestling tea store under Calhawk savage and uh if you guys are interested in buying my merch uh i plug it all the time on my instagram or facebook or twitter uh just uh, send me a dm in one of them and you know we'll, if you got paypal cash app or Venmo, then we're you'll get a shirt or a hat, either one. 
Uh, trying to think of what else. You can catch me. I'll be, let's see, I'll be in town, I think, for FGW December 17th. I think that's a Friday. Right. So I'll be back for that. And then uh, you can catch me in Tennessee uh, the first week of December and then Kentucky. And uh, I think then that's about it. I'll be in World Class Revolution December 11th in uh, Irving, Texas uh, for a uh, Star Wars Christmas story. I believe it's what it's called. Uh, they got Mick Foley on there, a bunch of other talent, Carlito. Uh, if you guys are in the Texas area, please come out, support, come see me. I'll have shirts and merchandise for sale or even pictures and uh, cool arrowhead necklaces, cool arrowhead uh, bracelets, whatever you guys want. Authentic Native American made. I made them just so you guys know. Put all that time and work in them. The least you guys can do is represent where one. So uh, I I just followed Bird of Prey 99 on Instagram. Appreciate it. I got the I got the the, the, uh, the notification. <laughs> uh, what, but what are you waiting for, Donnie? Why haven't you followed him yet? Uh, I, my phone's upstairs. <laughs> no, you gotta get uh, but Donnie, what would be cool is if uh, December 19th or yeah, just December 17th, I would see, I'd like to see you there and meet you, shake your hand in person and stuff like that. Yeah, I said, I've been to FGW a couple times. So I have to see what we got going on, maybe swing down there. Well, you you know now you know I'm coming, so you don't there you have go. an excuse. And uh, you know what are you? A, look like an XL two X. Oh, I'm a two or three X. Yeah, <laughs> I got I got those sizes too, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> wow, this has been a great conversation. So, let me wrap it up by saying my name is Meat Hook Jim, along with my co-host Donnie Hoover and our special guest. The Savage, Kyle Hawk. Kyle, it has been a great show. Thank you so much for taking your time to talk to us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on December 17th. Yep. I appreciate you guys for bringing me on, talking wrestling, talking horror movies. Uh, Very grateful for the opportunity. And uh, for those listening at home, uh, please catch these guys every time they do a podcast. They do a great job. Listen to them. Follow them if you're not uh subscribe like whatever uh it is that they do and uh enjoy the show and buy kyle's merch buy my stuff i want to cuss but i can't i have to be better <laughs> buy my stuff the least you guys can do well, on a you podcast can you me- can cuss we don't care about this this is different <laughs> oh, you guys tell me all the time that you're native oh i'm cherokee well then prove it buy a shirt mm-hmm. buy one <laughs> do it now do it now don't get, stop listening to this and just go to my instagram go right now bye <laughs> good night everybody yep. see you guys later guys